So upon doing a little research into Latin and how everything sounds, apparently I was pronouncing the uh, official name of this wrong. This should be Latradictus Martas. Personally, I don't know Latin all that well, but I just had this arrive. I actually just woke up really early, had a roommate wake me up because this is here. I'm so excited. So I'm about to unbox this and we will see just how well this is packaged and what we've got inside. Now it looks like it's already a little, even though it's special handling, it already looks like there's some damage here. Thanks FedEx. I have a feeling I shouldn't be doing this barely awake. Just a hunch. But, yeah, there's a lot of tape here too. I'm just waiting. Cause I mean, I mean, I'm sure. Oh wow. This package tight. Okay, also I do want to give a shout out to uh, Gene Younger from uh, Creative Ectothermic Solutions. I will leave the um, her website in the description uh, for you guys to check out. Um, that's where I got this. Uh, her focus does seem to be on tarantulas in general. She's not like a general reptile vendor. However, it seems like they do regularly go to reptile expos. They do focus on selling new world and old world tarantulas. Oh my god, this is... Thank you, Gene Younger. Um, I'm gonna have to, like, cut this with scissors. I feel bad for the spider in here. All the tape has been removed. Now I'm sure there is, hopefully, a package in here. A well-sealed, you know... Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> envelope within an envelope. Jeez, it's like one of those puzzle boxes. This poor spider. <laughs> wow. Now, being dyspraxic, that's what my whole channel is about, so... Some context if you really want. Okay, I really... Is that... There it is. There it is. Wow. Gene Younger, I have to have definitely made sure. Here we go. Lac Tradectus Mactans. The uh, Southern Black Widow. And even this is taped up real good, too. Um, so here's the thing. I'm very heavily tempted just to let her go in the habitat. Um... I do want to try to give a, a very close up look at her. However, right now I've just woken up and I would really like to go back to bed. It's because of that I do want to kind of get this quick and over with. Um, there should be worms around here, something I can feed her with too. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's just get this opened up. Uh, I'm obviously not going to open this right here in the drawer because she could just get out. However, I am definitely going to just drop her in the habitat because from what I heard, these guys don't like to stay put. And um, that's an issue. Okay, because I want to be extremely careful when handling this, I am going to place her right here, and I will open it within the habitat. Now, this is incredibly dangerous, and I would not suggest trying any of this at home whatsoever. Um, you know, these can be incredibly dangerous spiders if you're immunocompromised, really old or really young. But even then, you really don't know until you've actually identified the spider yourself and 
just to be on the safe side, I would heavily suggest nobody try this at home. Um, like, at all. I personally have been handling spiders for most of my adult life, so I kind of know what I'm doing here. It, you know, that's why I made sure I was woken up upon the arrival of this lovely specimen. So, to keep that in mind, as I give my little biology here. Now, I will admit that I did kind of make a big mistake here, and that was not actually previewing the spider in the cricket case first to give you guys a good view of her, because um, it turns out that these spiders, especially once introduced to a new habitat, like to hide right away, and within five minutes of putting her in the habitat, she kind of disappeared to within the substrate. So, um, because of this channel and everything I put into this channel, I've actually placed her habitat over here on the table, you know, the table table. And, um, from what I've heard, and I will give some credit to a discord user in the, um, I believe it's called legs of plenty discord. Um, the user Prickly Goo, who uh, was helping me basically uh, try to understand what exactly I was missing out here, why it seemed like she wasn't coming out, why I couldn't get a decent picture of her. Apparently she's just waiting to kind of scope the area, see if it's going to be safe. And um, probably by the time I get home from work tomorrow, uh, um, there should be webs all over it. And within a couple more days, she'll actually emerge and we'll be able to see her again. Uh, when I get the Hesperus in like a week or two, I will definitely use the Critter Case that time. Uh, that was my bad. Again, I was kind of woken up to uh, the package kind of sitting there. And I was just like, okay, well, I definitely want to open this now. A little bit of excitement overtaking me. This is Latridectus mactans, also known as the Southern Black Widow Spider. Uh, she's distinct from Latridectus hesperus, or the Western Black Widow Spider, in that her hourglass is fully compact and together, where in an L. hesperus, it would be separated. Uh, this is also distinct from the Latridectus variolus, who has a load of different variations in both the patterns on the abdomen, both on the ventral and dorsal side. And typically, if there is an hourglass shape, it would be on the top of the spider rather than the bottom. It was actually prior to, I believe, 1980 or 1970-something that almost all species of Black Widow in North America were labeled L. Mactans and were thought to be of L. Mactans, and it wasn't until recently that it was discovered that there are three variations of Black Widow spider to include L. Mactans, but due to her hourglass uh, shape and the fact that it is one single soul hourglass, she is well our de facto. Oh shit, <laughs> Black Widow Spider. She, she, she made me jump for a second there. Now, as she is choosing to display right here, uh, many of these spiders, despite building a very intricate web that is relatively tangled and disorganized, tend to prefer to hide. And there she is again, sticking out for the camera. Trying to scare the shit out of me again, I guess. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, they do tend to build a relatively intricate web uh, that is three-dimensional and without much order as opposed to most orb-weaving spiders and other spiders that are in the Theridae family. Now, as much as she admittedly scared the shit out of me there, uh, while they are capable of providing a painful bite, most of the time they will not go out of their way to attack people. In fact, uh, many cases they'll run away like she did there. They're just relatively fast. And um, if they do bite, it's only when cornered, provoked, and squeezed, essentially. Uh, most bites from Black Widow spiders are completely accidental or people just being complete idiots. 
If a wet bite is provided, the worst of situations can include muscle spasms on and around the bite area, as well as nausea and some muscle cramping. But otherwise, uh, I mean, it's painful, but it won't kill the average person as long as you're healthy and you don't have any negative cardiovascular issues. Most of the deaths seem to come in people who are either really young or really old. And as of recently, there is an anti-venom available almost everywhere that these guys are native to. And it's also important to note that there hasn't been a reported death from a black widow spider bite since 1984. Another common mistake with black widows is that they're referred to as similar to the Australian redback spider, which is, well, native to Australia and is a, a completely different species of spider. These guys are known to be significantly less aggressive. Again, they tend to be docile. They tend to run away where the Australian redback can eat anything from small lizards to mice. Now, I'm going to find out if she can eat something a little bigger eventually once I add more stuff to this tank. However, um, as of right now, so far, all she's had is a couple of mealworms. She had a wolf spider that was in here uh, when I first made the tank that I just kind of casually threw in here. Otherwise, she hasn't really eaten much that's really bigger than her or anything. I do plan to do more uh, videos on her as the time goes by. Something I mentioned in the introduction to this series was that I was planning on getting an L. Hesperus and an L. Variolus to also put in the tank with her. However, I have found that a lot of things are kind of going against importing these spiders. Not, not as much a legal thing, don't worry. It's not really too illegal to import these spiders within state lines. However, getting an Australian redback over here would be incredibly difficult. It's just that trying to keep her alive is my, my imperative right now, at least for the next week or two. I really want to learn as much as I can about this spider individually before going on to introducing other spiders into the tank. Because as the past couple of days have gone by, I've learned so much about these spiders. In fact, the first time I actually introduced her to a tank, and I actually referenced this earlier in the video, she kind of ran off into the brush and didn't emerge for about two or three days because she was in hiding, kind of just getting used to her habitat. It's just recently now, I believe two to three days later, that she's actually coming out a lot more often and I'm able to actually see her on a regular basis, where before that she was, I was almost half worried that she had escaped or something. In the future of this series, I do plan on using the critter case, like I said earlier, um, so I can try to show off these spiders, but really the best way to show them off is in sort of a naturalistic habitat, like my L. Mactans there. So, um, if you're looking for more info or you have any questions about these spiders, I've been doing a shit ton of research. I'm also kind of studying her as she goes about her life too. So if you are interested in that, feel free to, um, you know, leave something in the comments or shoot me a message on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Otherwise, uh, that's it for this video right now. Um, I do plan to do more in-depth videos and I want to try to make this somewhat of a weekly series, especially now that I have the live animal herself. But yeah, that's it for this video, everyone. And you guys have a good one.